Hello, I'm Dr. Elliot Shevel, Migraine Treatment Specialist from the Headache Clinic in Johannesburg, South Africa. And in this presentation, I will explain why the currently accepted migraine classification and diagnosis is a fiasco, a tragic fiasco. It's tragic because since the adoption of this classification in 1988, it has severely retarded migraine research, resulting in countless millions of migraine sufferers receiving the wrong or inadequate treatment. Migraineurs are suffering unnecessarily from chronic debilitating pain that makes their lives absolutely miserable. The classification lists the criteria used to make the diagnosis. And the diagnosis, of course, determines the treatment. So because treatment is based upon the classification, if the classification is flawed, the treatment will likewise be faulty. And the present classification of migraine is indeed fatally flawed. And because of this, migraine sufferers frequently get the wrong treatment and continue to suffer. Let me explain. The first classification of primary headaches was developed in 1962 by the Ad Hoc Committee, a group of neurologists with a special interest in migraine. They correctly classified primary headaches as per the published data into vascular headache of the migraine type, muscle contraction headache, and mixed muscular vascular headache. As you can see, the different types of headaches were classified according to the anatomical structure from which the pain originates. With this classification, the doctor had to examine the patient to determine where the pain originated. And one could then direct the treatment at that structure, either the arteries or the muscles or, as is frequently necessary, at both. But, in 1985, the International Headache Society decided that they needed to improve on the Ad Hoc Committee's classification, and they appointed a committee to compile a new classification. Professor Jess Olesen, a prominent Danish neurologist, and headache researcher with an interest in headache classification was appointed to head the classification committee. The new classification called the International Classification of Headache Disorders or ICHD is now accepted worldwide as the gold standard and headache specialists all over the world use it as a guide to diagnosis. Specialist headache journals only accept papers if the cohorts have been selected according to the ICHD criteria. So all research into migraine is based on the ICHD. But as you will see, Professor Olison and his committee tragically took a wrong turn and lost the way. I use the word tragically because it has resulted in endless unnecessary suffering for countless migraine sufferers all over the world. During a debate with Professor Olison in 2009, I pointed out to him the fatal flaws in the ICHD. The Congress was called the Congress on Controversies in Neurology. And I was judged by the audience of headache specialists to have won the debate. Unfortunately, though, Professor Olison took no notice, and subsequent versions of the ICHD retain the same fundamental flaws. Why do I say they took a wrong turn? 
Well, they made two fundamental errors. Remember, the ad hoc classification was based on the structures where the pain originated, muscles and arteries. First, they eliminated all mention of the origin of the pain, the muscles and the arteries. The diagnosis now had to be made on the symptoms alone. This meant it was no longer necessary for the doctor to examine the patient to ascertain the source of the pain. Their second fundamental error, which I will address today, is that they forgot one of the most basic principles in the practice of medicine. The treatment must be based on sound scientific research. It must be evidence-based. So let's look closer at the ICHD and I will show you that the ICHD has absolutely zero scientific basis. It is most certainly not evidence-based. Remember, the ICHD states that every patient entered into a research project must fulfill the ICHD diagnostic criteria. In the ICHD2, the second edition, it actually states the great majority of evidence-based treatments for headache have been developed using the first edition. But if the ICHD is itself not evidence-based, how can any treatments that are based on the ICHD be evidence-based? Will they not? The truth is, as I will explain, that no current migraine treatments are evidence-based. According to the ICHD, to make a diagnosis of migraine, there have to be at least five attacks. The headache should last between 4 and 72 hours. And the pain should have at least two of the following characteristics. It should be unilateral, it should be throbbing, it must be of moderate to, se to severe intensity, and it must get worse with mild physical activity, such as walking upstairs. And there should be at least one of the following associated symptoms, nausea and or vomiting, and light plus sound sensitivity. So let's look at each one of these diagnostic criteria and see how Professor Olison and his committee of experts chose these criteria. The first criterion is that there must have been at least five attacks. I have been studying the headache literature for 30 years and I can state categorically that there are no published papers in the medical literature that even mention how many attacks there should be. So how did the committee decide on the number five? The method they used is known as GOPSAT. This is the acronym for good old boys sitting and talking. GOPSAT. So for the first criterion, there are zero data. The second criterion is the duration of the attacks. The ICHD says the pain should last between 4 and 72 hours, but there's absolutely nothing in the medical literature to show why this time frame was taken, was chosen. So how was it decided upon? It was decided upon by a thumb suck, nothing more than a thumb suck. So for the second criterion, once again, there are zero data. Then we have the four pain characteristics of which at least two must be present in order to diagnose migraine. The first is that the pain is unilateral. Let's see how they decided upon that one. It started about 
200 AD with Galen, the Greek physician who first described migraine. He described a one-sided headache accompanied by nausea and vomiting and called it migraine. The word migraine is derived from the Greek words emisi meaning half and kranos meaning helmet. It was a nice description and the word is stuck. But not only did the word stick, as I will explain, people still wrongly believe against the data that migraine should be one-sided. Now, when it comes to one-sidedness, there are actually plenty of data available. In this paper by Professor Olison himself, he reported that in a group of 750 patients diagnosed with migraine according to their symptoms, the pain was unilateral in 56% and bilateral in 44%. So slightly more had unilateral headache than bilateral headache. But the problem was that one of the symptoms they used to choose the 750 patients was unilateral headache. So there was a strong bias towards unilateral pain in his sample, and still only just over half had unilateral pain. Many other structure, uh, studies available to the committee at the time had also shown that one-sidedness is not a reliable criterion for diagnosing migraine. Here are four, but these studies were simply ignored by Professor Olison and his committee. The next symptom diagnostic of migraine is that the pain should be pulsating. But Professor Olison's own research showed that only 47% of patients diagnosed with migraine had throbbing or pulsating pain, fewer than half. Yet pulsating pain remains an important defining criterion for migraine in the classification. And it gets worse. In the ICHD, pulsating is defined as throbbing or varying with a heartbeat. But in 2010, headache, the official journal of the American Headache Society published an article that showed that the rate of throbbing in migraine does not correlate with a pulse rate. This is easily verified. While taking the pulse, ask the patient to tap on the desk with a finger each time they feel a throb of pain. It almost never correlates with a pulse rate. Now, if one of the criteria for diagnosing migraine is, as the ICHD states, pulsating pain that correlates with a pulse rate, then how can that be reconciled with the published data that it almost never corresponds with the, pub, with the pulse rate? Once again, Professor Olison and his committee ignored the data. And although the ICHD was updated in 2018, throbbing pain is still a defining criterion for the diagnosis of migraine. It gets, as Alice in Wonderland said, curiouser and curiouser. Curiouser for scientists, but tragic for migraineurs. The next criterion is the intensity of the pain. The pain should be moderate to severe, but once again, there are no data. So here again, the classification committee simply used GOBSAT. The next symptom is if the pain gets worse with mild physical activity, such as walking upstairs. But as you probably guessed by now, there are no data. So here again, the classification committee simply used Upset. The next criterion is the presence of nausea and or vomiting. Once again, there are no data. The 
And the last symptom is light and sound sensitivity. But as you have probably guessed again, there are no data. In all scientific papers, the references are numbered so that they can refer to specific numbered parts of the text. And in the migraine without aura section of the ICHD, there are actually 13 references. But none of these are numbered. And what's more, none contain any data pertaining to the criteria for the diagnosis of migraine. The same applies to the references in the ICHD1 and the ICHD2. They contain no data. So to sum up, for six of the eight criteria for migraine, there are no substantiating data. And for the two of the criteria, the data actually contradict their inclusion as criteria for diagnosing migraine. Remember that no research into migraine is ever published if the cohorts have not been selected according to the ICHD. The significance is clear. Here we have a document that has to be used by scientists if they want to publish scientific papers, but that itself has never been substantiated scientifically. Olison actually admitted in a paper published in 1994, and I quote, the ICHD criteria were developed without the collection of data. He went on to say, and I quote again, the ICHD criteria were based on opinions. Professor Olison actually admitted in writing that the ICHD criteria were based on nothing but opinions. So as I said earlier, migraine is diagnosed by Gobsat and all migraine treatment today is based on Gobsat. And that is why migraine drugs don't work for so many migraineurs. They are being given to the wrong people because the ICHD is fatally flawed. The triptans are the most widely prescribed rescue medications for migraine. But a comprehensive meta-analysis found them to have a sustained pain-free rate of only 20 to 25% over three attacks. The triptans are excellent medications, but the poor success rate is because they are so frequently prescribed for the wrong patients. To get the best possible results at the headache clinic in Johannesburg, we disregard the ICHD completely. Instead, we first examine the patient. This enables us to determine the source of the patient's pain. We are then able to accurately target and treat the pain source. In this way, we are able to achieve lasting pain relief without the ongoing use of medication. Let me give you another example of how absurd the ICHD is. The ICHD makes a clear distinction between the two most common primary headaches, migraine and tension type headache. It's clearly important, according to the ICHD, to distinguish between them. But is it really important? The preventive medications most commonly prescribed for chronic migraine are the antidepressants, and the anticonvulsants. And the most common drugs prescribed for chronic tension type headache are also the antidepressants and the anticonvulsants, exactly the same drugs used for migraine prevention. This means that when prescribing preventive drugs, making the ICHD distinction 
between migraine and tension headache is a totally meaningless exercise. Voltaire, hundreds of years ago, said doctors prescribe drugs of which they know little, for diseases of which they know less, for patients of which they know nothing. Because of the ICHD, this is still true today about migraine treatment. In conclusion, as you have seen, the ICHD is fundamentally flawed and must be scrapped. It's abundantly clear that migraine and other primary headaches be reclassified based on data and scientific evidence. Only in this way can we move forward to a meaningful understanding of migraine and eliminate the ongoing tragic and unnecessary suffering that has been caused by the current classification fiasco. Colleagues who would like copies of the papers quoted in this presentation or who are interested in learning more about the highly effective treatments based on identifying and eliminating the source of the pain, should please contact me at drshevel at thehedaclinic.net.